Hello everyone. When I worked shifts in my hospital ER, if there was one thing we were all absolutely terrified of, it was missing a patient with meningococcemia. Meningococcemia is one of the most devastating infectious diseases you can think of. It can kill a perfectly healthy kid or a teenager within 24 hours. So if you don't recognize it right away, in 6 or 12 hours it might already be too late. And every year we get news reports of kids dying after a doctor failed to make the right diagnosis in time. And it can be a very difficult diagnosis to make early because because when people hear of meningococcus, meningococcemia, they automatically think about meningitis. But meningococcemia without meningitis is the main problem. Meningitis is relatively easy, straightforward to diagnose. But in meningococcemia without meningitis, since there is no meningitis, you don't have the typical symptoms of meningitis. So forget about neck stiffness, forget about bad headache. Unspecific symptoms like fever, malaise, lethargy are all you have in the beginning. And to make matters worse, meningococcemia is most common in winter months when flu season is at its peak. So everyone has the flu, everyone has fever, everyone feels and looks miserable. How do you recognize this one case of meningococcemia among basically endless cases of your garden variety self-limited influenza, right? Now, whenever we hear about meningococcus, us doctors and students, we automatically think of this impressive non-blanching rash. And yes, of course, if you see a child or a teenager with fever and this rash, of course, you will think of meningococcemia, but you don't have to be Dr. House to do that. The trouble is, this typical rash only appears after 12 or more hours and by that time your patient might already be in septic shock. Now, not many people realize that meningococcemia can also present with a generalized blanching rash very early in the course of illness before this typical non-blanching rash appears. And this unspecific rash can resemble something that you would find in viral diseases. But always remember that viral rashes typically appear later after several days of prodromal symptoms, right? So if you see an early appearance of a rash within 24 hours after onset of first symptoms, this is always a red flag. You should suspect, of course, meningococcemia, but also other potentially life-threatening conditions. I talk all about this in my separate video on rashes in general, right? But in order to see any type of rash, you have to actively look for it. It might not be all that impressive in the beginning. So when you have a kid or a teenager, a young adult who has fever and you don't know what's wrong with them, make sure that you examine their skin closely. So examine the entire surface of the skin, the trunk, the extremities, pay especially close attention to flexor surfaces and to the areas where belts or elastic bands put pressure on the skin. These are the places where you will find the first petechiae, right? Make sure you have a good light source and don't forget to examine the mucous membranes as well. So check the oral cavity and check the conjunctiva and the sclera. This is where the petechiae may be most visible, right? So in the beginning, the rash might not be all that impressive. So you have to actively look for signs of hemorrhage, of bleeding into the skin. I cannot overemphasize the importance of good quality physical examination. In regards to that, whenever you have a patient with fever and you don't know what's wrong with them, always measure their vital signs. I mean, with every acutely ill patient, you should always check their vital signs and do it thoroughly. It will make your life so much easier. So state of consciousness, blood pressure, heart rate, and what doctors often skip, respiratory rate. I always repeat, increased respiratory rate is one of the earliest signs of serious disease. And of course, body temperature. This will only take a minute, but again, make sure that you always thoroughly check your patient's vital signs. If the patient comes relatively late in the course of illness, there might already be signs of hypoperfusion. So the patient's heart rate might be abnormally elevated. Later on, their blood pressure might drop. So again, check their vital signs. The body tries to compensate for this with peripheral vasoconstriction, which means your patient's extremities might feel cold. Their peripheral pulse 
might be weak and if you check their skin as you should every single time right the skin could look very pale and mottled if you see this of course this is a huge red flag now regarding fever every doctor will notice elevated body temperature right but if your patient has abnormally low body temperature this is even worse and remember just because your patient's body temperature is abnormally low this doesn't mean that they don't have an infection quite the opposite this could be overwhelming sepsis and this is actually a marker of worse prognosis especially if other vital signs are altered as well they are not called vital for nothing so again we have to always check our patient's vital signs now when the person's temperature is rising they usually experience chills we've all experienced that at some point in our lives right you feel kind of cold when your temperature is going up but if the patient has rigors violent chills that last for 10 minutes or more this can be a sign of serious disease of bacteremia so if your patient has fever if they mention chills ask them what kind of chills are they talking about because many people don't know the difference between chills and rigors have them describe them to you if if these chills were very violent so that the person was unable to stop shaking if they lasted for more than 10 minutes you should take this seriously this could be a sign of a very serious disease of sepsis Another prominent feature of meningococcemia of overwhelming sepsis in general can be severe pain in the extremities, especially in anterior thighs. Many patients have severe pain in their back, in their abdomen, and this can mislead you to think that the main problem is actually in the abdomen. And of course, to make things even more difficult, many patients with influenza have muscle pain, right? But this type of pain in meningococcemia can be very severe severe kids can even refuse to walk teenagers also they will report very very severe pain in the extremities this is not the sign of influenza you should take this very seriously and finally trust your patients trust their parents their caretakers we are all afraid when our kid gets fever it's normal we are parents right but if you see that the parents are especially terrified if you if they tell you doctor i've never seen my kid like this something is wrong i, I don't i don't know what's going on if they feel especially worried take this seriously even if you are not convinced that the, the kid is septic right and in the end if you don't know what's going on with your patient it's okay you cannot know everything every single time right away you're not psychic hospitalize them for observation you will take some blood tests you will reassess them in half an hour in a couple of hours and in six hours let's say you will have a much better idea of what's actually going on with them there are many different serious infections out there but they do share a lot in common if you work in primary care or acute care you have to be able to diagnose or at least suspect these conditions as early as possible but unfortunately i think that we don't learn how to do that well enough in medical school so i decided to do something about it that is why i make these lectures and that is why i created a short free online course for clinicians and students where they will learn how to recognize serious infections early you will find the link in the description of this video you won't find anything like it on the internet i know because i looked that is why i decided to make it myself it will transform the way you think about infections and it will help you a great deal in practice it will keep you out of trouble the link is right there thank you for watching good luck out there and take care